Okay, so uh, I'd like to start by uh, saying how excited I am to uh, be a part of this new format of ASSC. Uh, these consciousness salons allow us to, uh, you know, take some time to explore a topic in more depth with a uh, specialized, uh, you know, group of people interested in, uh, in this specialized topic. Uh, not everyone are, uh, is an expert, I imagine. In fact, uh, I would uh, say, uh, feel free to use the chat to just let us know what your background is so we can kind of get an idea of who, who our audience is. So just say if you're, what your primary discipline is, and I think that should be just about enough. I'm not gonna assume any prior knowledge of synesthesia, but I will try not to bore you if you do have prior knowledge of synesthesia. Okay, so my plan for the next eight uh, is as follows. A quick introduction to synesthesia. Uh, I will then tell you I will then tell you why synesthesia researchers are actually studying consciousness. Hear me there? My computer just, but my internet connection is unstable. Let's hope it stays stable, but uh, which I can, uh, let me just make sure this is connected. I think I, I now have my backup set on. So uh, I will tell you why synesthesia research actually studying consciousness and searchers and scholars, which I guess is most of you should be studying synesthesia. Uh, finally, I will say why we should all listen to synesthetes when they're sharing their experiences in their images. Um, okay, so let's start with something. Our conceptual experience is inherently multi simplest activity like reading a book. The visual experience is accompanied a tactile experience of the smooth texture of the distinct sound of flipping a page of a new book, an old book, etc., and and so we have cross-modal interactions in our everyday life, and they have sensory convergence. What I mean by, by that is information in one sensory modality can influence processing. Okay, so vision can affect auditory perception, sound can affect affect visual perception, vision can affect body image, the famous um, hand illusion, a color can affect taste, judge, sound can affect food texture judgments, lots of examples. Okay. Cross-model interactions are quite common, the necessary sense of the world around us. What's more so that in some individuals, such cross-model interactions can actually occur when only one sense is stimulated. Okay, and this is the anesthesia. So what is anesthesia? Usually if you look up a, a, some sort of dic dictionary definition like this, stimulation in one modality, the perceptual experience in another modality, and the uh, it's usually given is uh, when you listen to a sound, you see a, a certain color, that's synesthesia. Uh, of course, there are many other sensory combinations. We're talking here not about a uh, creation. We're talking about a concrete sense experience. Okay, it's not just a, a colorful way of describing uh, what we're looking at. And to kind of prove it, it's for real, what is quite a lot of evidence that's consistent with that. Of course, you know, looking at someone's brain, we wouldn't be able, we, we can see, we wouldn't be able to say 
for certain what the experience is like. Well, maybe on a rudimentary level, we're not quite yet uh, reading minds 100%. But self-reports, we have behavioral evidence that is difficult to, uh, what I mean by that is we have evidence where actually showing superior performance in a task. Uh, uh, and why? Because superior performance is able to fake, unlike, say, a slowdown in reaction that you would see in a strip-like paradigm or interference paradigm, okay? So we do have paradigms where uh, the evidence is, and of course, there's the neuroimaging evidence that the yeah, idea about, uh, you know, certain parts of the brain that we would expect to be active, genuinely having a perceptual experience, we do be active in many cases. All of synesthesia, auditory visual synesthesia, artist impression of uh, an elder piano quintet. This is from Jen K. And that's on the cover of our book, which is now updated 15, 16 years old. So uh, yeah, um, I, I did warn you. But synesthesia comes in two forms, developmental and acquired. It can be acquired following sensory loss, uh, brain damage, why do we want to use synesthesia as a model problem for consciousness? Because there are at least five things synesthesia can tell us about consciousness. It can help us understand individual differences in perception. Uh, it can help us understand the neural correlates of consciousness, especially given that there's so many types of synesthesia. It can tell us a few things about how we construct the, percep the perceived world and even the social world. And this, uh, uh, this uh, is something you could read about in our work on synesthesia and personification. Finally, it can tell us about altered states of consciousness. My last slide really uh, is why we should listen to synesthetes. And the reason is it's very easy to become overconfident that once we have named a phenomenon or a synesthesia variant, uh, then we get this feeling that we, we more or less know what there is to know about it. And uh, we make certain assumptions about what the phenomenon is like. And maybe we gather the group of 20 synesthetes and scan all of them. And then we average together a lot of interesting effect. We average them out because we are not aware of further individual differences within our group. So it's very important to listen to synesthetes, find out what the experience is like. Uh, at least my experience tells me that uh, we don't always understand that. And synesthetes are not immune as well, because if you are a synesthete and you have one particular type of synesthesia, you can become overconfident about what synesthesia is supposed to be like, whereas there could be seven other synesthetes who experience this slightly differently, okay? So we need to keep an open mind and always listen to what synesthetes have to say in their own words. And uh, the final note, of course, is uh, that links all of it is that art can, can often be an interesting way to explore consciousness. This has been said multiple times in various ver versions, uh, like painters explore uh, you know, visual consciousness because they're trying to see what tickles the senses. The same can be said about any other form of art. Uh, writers have been said to be exploring, um, to be exploring uh, consciousness. Uh, and so I'm not going to take any more of your time because I want to leave time for Svetlana and for uh, Ningue Shong. So without further ado, uh, I'll stop here. Uh, up forward to you. No, thank you so much. Uh, I hope we hear you again in uh, answering the questions. So I take over now the two with the, um, my presentation and just the, so that the, um, just the, try to find my 
Um, okay, so I'm a musician and uh, I'm a concert pianist and the, um, so the researcher as well. And the, so uh, music consciousness, uh, mostly the methodology to study it is through cognitive musicology because the music as a stimulus um, allows us to, um, to experience uh, intellectual and sensory awareness. So um, uh, just the, I show you the, oh, that's so, mm, okay. For some reason I can, ah, okay. Yes, okay. Technology. I'm as well in in Microsoft Teams. So Zoom is a new platform that they kind of. So um, music as a performance and the uh, for performer or audience is a multisensory experience, and there it's interesting how the sensory um, responses interact. And as well, it's uh, it's interesting to as well to watch how sensory in um, manifests into emotional experience. So. Um, there's a, I would say that the music consciousness, you see, it's a alternative um, reality, okay, alternative consciousness, because the studies of consciousness, uh, we have uh, three main categories uh, as uh, awakening, sleep, and vegetative states. So music and arts, it's a kind of imaginary reality, and that's what makes it challenging so what is real and what is actually the game of our imagery so that's why synesthesia kind of shows us a scientific way as the diversity of perceptions uh, and the to see the two how synesthetes uh, use uh, music as a stimulus for their creative endeavors uh, as well as it's a synesthesia you see it's only um, occurs in four percent of population while uh, cross-modal associations on music actually we all can experience and there's uh, some facts in music as well that say uh, as a program music or um, you know that uh, a lot of music compositions get uh, nicknames such as uh, even Moonlight Sonata Beethoven or Raindrop Chopin Prelude so it's all present but the uh, so synesthesia just give us more kind of scientific insight evidence you know that so it could be present in sensory um just translation from a one sensory modality to another so um uh, okay so um i do have a lot of collaborations with artists visual artists uh, and the synesthet artists and the just uh, professional visual artists and animators. So, and the by uh, International Association of Synesthets Artists and Scientists, we have regular meetings where we discuss an interdisciplinary because uh, how science progresses and then we share the artistic experiences as well. So, um, we had in Dublin, for example, um, during Brain Awareness Week, so uh, artist synesthet Timothy Layden painted music um, as I performed, I played, you know, the so piano program. And the, after that, so what I did, that so I tried to show this, um, um, his art animation in augmented reality, because I think, you know, the future of music education and music consciousness is actually demonstrating those experiences, uh, sensory, emotional, intellectual, visually. And the, so I just show you this uh, application, you know, um, because Yes, I think that the, the education in generally be going to be in virtual and augmented realities to experience rather than studying. So, oh, that's sorry, I skipped. So here, and then so yeah. So I press play. Okay, so now that's... Um, 
Um, then, so now that so it's, I was talking more about associative experiences or synesthesia experience art, but so I did historic research on um, um, symbolist composer Alexander Scriabin, and there's a lot of debates um, if he's synesthet or not, because you see that so he experienced um, synesthesia only <laughs> in three, C, D, and F sharp, so uh, pitch uh, colors to pitch um, but it's actually by my research I would say um, state or like hypothesis that so he had the musical space synesthesia and there so um, uh, in Trinity College Dublin we created computational model of um, musical space synesthesia based on research by um, Akiva Kabiri Linkowski, uh, Israeli researchers team. So that they, they stated in musical space synesthesia, musical pitches are perceived as having a specially defined hour. And like the vertical and horizontal representation of musical pitch tones in general population, synesthetes describe a linear diagonal organization of pitch tones. So there was research on Scriabin's performance style by Anatol Lekin and there, um, where he listened to recordings uh, available you know, at that time only on Mignon rolls. So, and by gravitational errors, he specified that so it seems that the composer separated the layers of musical texture. And the, that's how we programmed um, computational models that so it would actually react and show the shapes of different layers. Um, so um, I will show you now. That so um, that's the analysis of the score, and the uh, by each layer, it's um, by symbolic um, meaning of the um, musical texture. There's uh, archetypes of musical texture. Um, specific, I won't go now to philosophy. I just show that the the how it's mm -hmm, here. So there's actually a lesson from uh, this synesthesia perception uh, because visualization um, actually influencing time perception and the, I practice with my students. So it's allowing if uh, they give enough time for the shape, their technique and virtuosity much improves without um, um, many, many hours of practice. So it's because it's our perception, you know, we cannot exist uh, without acoustics, without our ear perception, without our imaginary, imagery and touch, because everything is connected, the speed, the, um, <laughs> the weight of the hands and the, so it's, it has a big impact, I think, you know, that's so on a piano technique, for example, is it so we can teach this visualization. So um, now is it so, um, we just wanted to, to say thank you that for being present, there's my publication, there's website. So uh, very welcome to get in touch. And the, so I will pass now presentation um, to Nin Hui Song, who painted um, Ballad Chopin number no. one, G minor. Uh, and the, so he will go through um, just his presentation. And then at the end, you will hear the performance. And I hope that so you will apply all this information. And the, I hope that your imagery will be more rich 
even than before. So Ninhui, you can take over. Yeah, thank you. Hello, Sienna, can you hear me? So I stop sharing my, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Everyone can hear me, okay? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So behind me is my music visualization of Chopin uh, ballad number one. In fact, uh, maybe I think it's three or four years ago, Sivilena uh, invited me, said, uh, I send you a uh, uh, MP3 about my performance. If you can visualize my piano uh, performance or not. <laughs> but at that time, I was uh, quite ready with my tools. So say, I, I, I want to explore the, your, your music uh, performance is very interesting. So it's really give me a lot of uh, synesthesia response. And so I want to say that it's a painting, two dimension, but in fact, my synesthesia uh, response is, is not just a painting, it's really an environment, is that I was, uh, I was inside of the painting and all is environment is like a nature environment. So I make a very sh a small uh, mod uh, model to show you. I don't know if you can see. Yes. So this is the painting, okay? But in fact, I, I, I was here, okay? I was here hiking in the mountains to the top. So, so you can see during my hikings, I have a lot of feelings. So a lot of different kind of perceptions uh, as, as you. Huh? So this is, a, in general, is my uh, response of <laughs> Sirena's work. Uh, so uh, can I share my uh, presentation? Yes. Can you see this presentation? Yes, yes, everything fine. Ah, OK, good. Let me put large. Okay, so uh, let me start from the very beginning. Okay, uh, uh, so uh, I think it's after five or six years later, I joined the international synesthesia community and a uh, lot of exchange the program. And uh, you can see that uh, in, I was invited in, in, in Milan as well in Granada University and working with them. Uh, so, uh, I, I, when I was young, I played violin, and I think the first time when I have a, a feeling of a, a, a color for is through the Vivaldi's uh, violin concerto for for seasons, uh, and uh, at that time I would join a local amateur uh, orchestra uh, team. I played the second violin. And later on, I think around 10 years later, I started to read uh, Kandinsky book and really, and what he said encouraged me a lot for a further uh, explore that if I can find a way to, to paint it, to paint those kind of uh, colorful feeling or not. Uh, so after around eight years uh, later, I make an exhibition, uh, exhibitions and in Poly Theater during the Beijing music, uh, music Festival. So I'm including my serious work of music fantasy and uh, uh, political expressions. So at that time, uh, one of the audience said that what you did in the painting was related to synesthesia. At that time, it was my first time to hear this name. Then, I start to learn synesthesia and doing my painting work in a more uh, uh, systematic approach and uh, including cr uh, create uh, the visual uh, methodology to develop those uh, uh, experimental paintings. So what I'm painting is including uh, Western uh, music and also Chinese traditional music as well. Um, if I'm thinking that uh, what is the synesthesia in music? What does that mean, me, uh, uh, for me? I think uh, it should be the two part, two stage. The first stage is before 
2013. Uh, at that time, my Synesthia response is uh, quite simple. Is for example, is the music I like attractive uh, to me? So I want to pay attention. When I pay attention, I, I, I can uh, I can have response for many many things, uh, and I can see the color and shape. And what is interesting now for me, because after I read the book, is that if the music I pay attention and attractive, and uh, it seems that the synesthetic mind is open. If it's not something interesting, my mind doesn't, uh, it's not open. I can paint, uh, no problem, but all is based on my experience because I have a lot of experience. But really, I want to serious to, to have my true feelings. <laughs> it, it should be attractive to me. So this is the first part. And second, second because at that time, Really, the, the something on my mind to me is difficult, you know, it's not so easy because it's a, it's a way. I don't know how to do this way. From another approach is that when I make some paintings and really some painting give me some inner sound. So what does inner sound mean? I will give you one example. So, so this is something like a harmony in beauty. Something can be hidden, but I can see. So, so this is the first stage. So I, I give you one example. It's about this. Matisse's house. I visit Matisse's house in the south of uh, France in his uh, old uh, villa. And uh, on the background, there was uh, many, many, uh, you know, the, the plants around, colorful, and the sun, sun shines. So I, I designed an image. I designed an image in order to reflect this uh, interesting, uh, in interesting views. So once I made it, once I made it, I found that uh, this music, uh, this painting is have, uh, can you see this in the cor corner? It's kind of flowing direction, flowing direction. It's like that, you know, in general, it's, it's running like that. And uh, the, 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 the color is like that, but also there was a shadow part and it kind of moving together. And immediately this on my mind is the music of uh, Frank's violin uh, sonato because I, I, I'm quite familiar with that. Even I try to play with this, is this music I try to play. Uh, I try to play for you, okay, sorry. Yes, later on there will be a part with this little bit of uh, uh, theme, okay? And then they change into a bright part again. So, uh, but of course, such kind of uh, visual elements can be associated to other music as well. But really I found that this music and the painting in this way, they are together. It's something like a family visual element and the uh, music element are, are, are together. They are friend, they are friend, they are family, all combined together. So this is the, the, the stage at that time. So, but at, at that time, you know, what I'm painting is something like randomly I, I associate with music. But if someone asks, can you paint this? Uh, can you uh, uh, paint this music? It's, so difficult for me. So later on, I try to develop these skills I explained to you. And because the first time I would say that the music is really uh, a quite a lot of things inside as the, uh, the our uh, colleague said, uh, uh, he, the music can bring us uh, emotions, uh, bright or richness, temperature, color, the motion speed, uh, shape, uh, shape, and the line and floor, touch, texture, taste, or smell. So I try to develop these uh, tools. And what is important is that to make 
the music paint mu music to painting and the visual painting to music do things together. And with these things, I can really paint something that the music uh, I really like. It's not randomly, okay. And uh, as as we uh, as we can see, uh, the Chopin's flute, uh, Chopin's Chopin's uh, sorry, is not flute. Is a uh, barrel, barrel the number one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, is uh, inspired by uh, Spirana's uh, painting. So I said, in fact, for me, at the beginning, I said, it's, it's, really, it's really like uh, uh, the in environment that in the mountains is it's really like that. It's, it's many, many uh, sense is around me. So I call it music, space, synesthesia, hyperstructure. And uh, you can, different paragraph, in different paragraph, all those element uh, is changing, is changeable. So I'm like a, a hike, uh, I'm a, a, a hiking in the mountains and uh, from different paragraph and I experience a lot raining, uh, windy and uh, snowing and then with sunshine, a uh, lot of things I can explain. So like the music at the beginning. You can see this music at the beginning, this long march is not so pleasant. <laughs> if someone forced me to, 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 to be in, inside and running. But later I found the so colorful things. Really, 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 really good. So it's really like a journey, huh? it's a sense of journey. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. So I give you another example is the, uh, the uh, one of the professors asked me, so, okay, Sean, uh, Nihui, you have a, uh, a tools. Uh, can you uh, make the visualization of Chinese famous painting, uh, uh, famous music of uh, flowing water? So this is, my, this is my final approach. So I explained to you uh, what I did uh, briefly. So this uh, flowing uh, water is uh, traditional Chinese, typical Chinese Chinese music, and uh, and it was in the golden record included uh, to the space shuttle to flying uh, to the world, and in fact this music is about a story that uh, uh, one of the one of the musicians asked another friend say. Uh, what do you think that through the, the, the performance you can feel something? So this is a and this is true the, the, the story about about this part and my grandfather have the choreography about the, the these two wording uh, flowing water. So uh, I give you the one example is because of through um, the discussion. When I have the idea, I invite the musicians. I invite the musician to to say that. Am I feeling? Do you have understand my feeling, or uh, is it the uh, same approach uh, of your sinister response? I invite uh, uh, Zhang Zhang Wanqing. So she did give me a lot of help. So for example, about this first paragraph, there will be a nine paragraph. So I said that. This music is I can hear the this blood uh, visions. I can I can also hear the something is uh, through all the direction and also something blowing on my face. So all the things I reflect in the painting is something I can feel that through the performance of the of the chain music. I just give you this.
So you can see in this paragraph, there was a typical uh, part which can give me a, a feeling. So I identified inside those red sentence. So in fact, there was a nine paragraph and some part I found that it is always stable, but the red part is changeable. So I, I write it down my feeling, okay? And also I have a kind of a ev evaluation of those parts the in the from zero to ten so so in fact these nine paragraph i all make those uh, uh, kind of uh, record uh, record my 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 synesthetic response okay and later on, with this all my mind it, it's not one shot huh? it's after uh, many times listening and then i have an impression i have an idea i can hunting in my draft of those uh, of those uh, visual music from the draft, so I with uh, with Wang Qing and his uh, teacher, we are together. So I always check with them. So what about my <laughs> draft? So they give me a lot of uh, uh, encouragement. So I made this draft and uh, into a painting, and finally I reach this. That because of, and I can say this is the nine paragraph of the music uh, flowing water from the very beginning to from the beginning to the end. So I call it hyperstructures. So this is a uh, sharing my short experiment uh, 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 experiment. So so um, if uh, you are interested in my 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 research work in the research gate, I have published some of my works and also my study as well. Okay. So I give to Sylvana to continue. Thank you so much, Ninhui. Um, so I think now that so I'm going to share a video file, I pre-recorded piano performance uh, and the, so you will hear um, Chopin ballad number one. So, and I want you while you're listening to so think about questions, what you would like to give to researchers and the, so our team will answer. So I just did now that to so, um, find my file. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> 